How are we doing? What a crowd. Have you seen the weather out there? I will start as I always do in asking what can this business mean for you? As one or two of you may just know, what it means for me is I never have to do this again. I grew up in a small town in the northeast of Scotland. I hope you can understand my accent, by the way. If you can't, tough. <laughs> Sometimes I speak faster. If, if I speak faster and you don't understand, you need to learn to listen faster, okay? <laughs> I come from a small town in the northeast of Scotland called Peterhead. Now, it's not the end of the world, but you can certainly see it from there. <laughs> I grew up. I was bred, and Hazel as well was bred into this industry, or dads, or granddads, etc. So really, the days that I did go to school, I wasn't really that pay paying that amount of attention, because I just wanted to leave school and get away on the boats, to become a, eventually become a skipper of a fishing boat. You know, when I left school, I thought an O-level was a blood group. So you don't have to be smart to work as business, okay? But that was bad, that was bad back then, but let me show you what my friends are having to do today. This is just some uh, uh, recent photos, and I did use this a couple of months ago, but I just think I've got a good impact, so I'll show you them again. The next time you buy a fish supper, don't question the price. <laughs> and it gets worse if you've seen the perfect storm. That looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, I'm getting shivers just looking at that, and I haven't done that for a while now. You think that's bad? Where have you see this? Because at Christmas this year, we had some snow. <laughs> it got worse. It was up to Carol, that's my daughter Carol, up, just up to her ankles there. And then it got worse. And it got colder. That was minus 14. We're out <laughs> collecting catalogs in minus 14. <laughs> Excuses? Uh, and it got deeper. <laughs> But there was absolutely no stopping us because as more snow fell and the temperature dropped, we were still going to be out there delivering these catalogs. So, I guess the question is, uh, I think Michael already said, I guess the question is, and it's coming to my first question, um, why are you here today in this gorgeous weather? I'll tell you why I'm here today, because it's aircon and I hate the sun like that. I'm a Scottish person. It takes me three weeks in the sun to go red. So why, why have you taken time? And it's so, such an impressive turnout today. Well done for everybody for, for showing up in this weather. Why have, you take, why have you came to this place? First question. To gain knowledge? To get out of the sun? Or to gain knowledge and to apply? Because how much times as people came to uh, conferences like this, uh, week, uh, monthly opportunity nights, the trainings that everybody does, how much time in the coming they really say, this is it this time, this is it this time, I'm going to take some fantastic notes, and when I get back I'm going to put them on the pile that I've got of my other fantastic notes. <laughs> is that what happens sometimes, yeah? So, I, I, go in for the answer. 92%, fantastic, there you go. So let's move on for there, okay? Are you ready for a life-changing statement? If I can give you a business-changing, financial situation-changing statement right now, are you ready for it? Life is simply a sausage machine. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious here, okay? <laughs> Lots of people are trying to make sausages, but forget to put the sausage meat in the top of the sausage machine. 
fact. Confused or do you agree? Let me explain what I mean. Lots of people are, th are thinking about becoming the best that can be in this, in this business, in this industry, right? In clean easy, right? But they forget to put the meat in the sausage machine. They forget to feed this thing here. Our clean easy business has turned over, I think it's about 89 million now. So if I left school and I thought a new level was a blood group, how can our business turn over 89 million? And I'll be absolutely, totally honest with you, and it's simply because we get into this type of stuff. And I didn't read, didn't read much books at school, and I certainly read less when I left school. So here's people, when I joined this industry, telling me that I need to read all this kind of books. And I started to read, a f I started to read one or two and just couldn't really get past the first chapter. And I wasn't making much progression, but it wasn't until I was sat down where a guy and he says, look, you want to make a go of this industry, this is what you need to do. The first thing you've got to do is read this book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you haven't got it, guys, I'm sure Barry must hate it the other day. Go and get it and study it every day. It is probably the Bible of uh, personal development. Napoleon Hill was, was commissioned by the richest guy in the world at the time to go and live with business legends like Henry Ford, um, Rockefeller and people at that billionaire status and he took all the bits that he had learned for these legends in business and put it into one book. Do you think you could learn something for that book? Absolutely. Now, I'll come back to that subject. So, to get the success in this business and clean easy, it's all about looking for the right results, okay? How are we going to get the right results? Through positive action plan. Action is the miracle part of the process. We can sit and read books all day and listen to the proper stuff in our CD in the car all day, but we forget to take the proper action, right? I call action the miracle part of the process. If somebody in your team is complaining through lack of results, ask them, how are you getting on with the miracle part of the process? The action part, the lift and the phone part. You see, I was terrified to lift the phone. You know, when we started in, in, in Clean Easy, Hazel wasn't allowed in the same room. She used to sit outside with the door this open. <laughs> well, what difference would it make? Strange, but there you go. And that's how I started. And I'd make a phone call and then say, how was that? She'd say, absolute rubbish. <laughs> or, sh should say, oh no, sorry, I've been told I can't say that word. Uh, 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 it was absolutely terrible, John. It was really dreadful, really dreadful. But now, I believe I am absolutely awesome on the phone. Absolutely the best on the phone. You know why? Because I decided if I wanted to be the best on the phone, I needed to do one thing. And you know what that was? The miracle part of the process. Which really, in the early days, is, in, which really, right through your career, you're only practicing. How do you get good at it? You practice. And here's a question for you. Who can practice? Who can practice? Everybody, right? But what I did find, the more stuff that I put in here, the more stuff that I put in here, when I was taking my uh, miracle part of the process, when I was taking my action, the better I came across to my prospects. Does that make sense for you? You see, this is just half of my library here. This is a great new book just on the market, by the way. It's got the Dreamers Move Mountains by my dear friend, Bert Jukes. Absolutely brilliant. If you Google it, you'll find it. It's absolutely fantastic. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is 
I'm leaning against the library. You can't get cleverer. Is that a word? Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't get cleverer through osmosis. Think about it. You can't get cleverer through osmosis. You can't lean on the books and gain the knowledge. You can't sleep with it under your pillow and it's in your head the next day. You've got to make the commitment, the miracle part of the process in this side of the business, and actually read them and study them and underline them and take out the highlights for you. Is that okay? Do you get my point there? How much folk will buy a book a day? Probably everybody or a CD. How much people will listen to it or read it? How much have you got in your house already that you haven't read? You've, act, you've got to do the miracle part of the process. Here's a red bit. <laughs> I thought there was words on, sorry. And a yellow bit and a couple of blue bits. So this is how you're going to become a master in this business, a master in clean easy, to become like Craig White, distributor of the year twice, direct seller, Jackie White, and Gavin, okay? This is how it's done. Most people start here. Most people start here. They blame everything. They blame everybody. I, I was going to say, I think, I, I, I don't think, I know I am the most blamed person in Scotland for people failing. If there are, it'll probably be Jamie, right? You get, people get in here, they, they, they blame it, but all they're doing is shaming themselves, so therefore they try and justify it. When all they're doing is missing out the miracle part of the process. What they've got to do, and it's, I, guess, I guess it's coming to this stage, and these days are great for doing that for, for people. What they've got to do is get to a position where they take responsibility for where they're at right now and get into the solution-seeking attitude, to find the solution, to take the action, the practice, to get their skill set competence. Now I'm going to come back to that in a minute, okay? To get into the growth and development and to have their spirit and their vision for the business. And eventually to reach a, a position of mastery, okay? So the solution for, for uh, the red bit, if you like, is to get into repair and recovery. For me, how uh, the answer to repair and recovery is coming to days like this, communicating with somebody that's making, a, making good money in the business, and also doing a wee bit of this every night or every morning, whatever suits you. Taking responsibility and finding your solutions is simply building your foundation on which you can make your fortune. Okay? Three is reserves. This is your reserves. Your, your practice. I've got so much in reserve now because I've practiced so much. Does that make sense? I don't hate to think about the phone call at the level that that prospect might be, might be at, if that makes sense to you. I don't hate to think because I can simply get into automatic mode because I've just done it so much. And then, obviously, get into to mastery. How you get there is simply practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you get. Who can practice? You're agreeing with, with me this time. So who can practice? Everybody. How do you eventually get the mastery? Through good stuff, good stuff. So next question. Sorry, missed a slide there. Understand, in case you don't recognize me, this, this is me. Uh, understand that this is part of the... This is part of the process. We're human beings. As Jim Rowan says, then I get frustrated, get fascinated. I've tried getting fascinated. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I get frustrated. But you've just got to understand that that is part of the process. Learn to accept it and move on, okay? So the next question. Where do you feel you're, you're at right now? Are you in repair recovery? Are you in the red bit? Are you building your foundation? Are you building your reserves? Or have you reached mastery? Okay, see what it says. One percent. Craig White, was that, was that you? No? <laughs> <laughs> we did a thing like this recently, and it was a guy's first meeting he'd ever been at. And he was there, first meeting. 
wanted to write a book about it. <laughs> That's a fact. The best helped to start well and clean easy. He's been in the business now six months and he hasn't sponsored no one. There you go. We are the bit. What do we know? Um, anyway, what I really wanted to speak about is the DNA of peak performance. What is the DNA of your peak performance? I believe it's made up of two things. Okay, it's made up of two things. It's made up of your competence and your commitment. But let's have a look at this. What is, what is competence? Competence, your competence is made of your skills, your knowledge, your experience, your passion, and your thinking. See, people say to me, and I guess I was bad for us, think, well, I haven't got the experience. I haven't got enough experience. But how do you get experience? You've got to get out there in the field and, and, and get it, right? You don't get experience reading the book. You don't get experience um, in building your business with the catalogs. You've got to put yourself on the front line. The best way to do it, in my opinion, is work two by two with, with your sponsor. Or nowadays, if it's online, get good at wording your emails to get their attention to make sure they will open the email. And you can only get experience by doing. Okay, you only get experience by doing. So go out there and just get some, well, as, a, as uh, the, the last speaker said at the, at, in Birmingham, just get some news. That's your experience. But learn for your experience and move on. Okay, the thinking can become right through this. And you know what? The more I get involved in this kind of stuff, the more the passion grows for success. So the, the more proper thinking I'm doing through the personal development stuff, the more passion I develop for success, the more I'm out there getting experience, getting knowledge and developing my skill set. Does that make sense to you? And that's how you get your competence. Commitment is made up of your motivation, your confidence. You know, I, I don't really get, and I don't want to sound arrogant here, I don't really get nervous before doing a talk now. But the first time I was ever asked to do a talk, and this is a fact, guys, it was a testimonial. It was 10 minutes to the testimonial slots, and I left the room. I locked myself in the toilet. I come out about an hour later. The bar was closed, I was devastated. But that's how scared I was. So I practiced, 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 practiced for a month. Absolutely practiced. Hi there, my name's John Stephen. So I'm going to ruin this for a month, my name's John Stephen. Next thing, five minutes to go. Am I going to go to the toilet? No, I'm going to stay. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. My name's John Stephen. The guy says, now we'll just have a little testimonial. John, would you like to stand up the front? I stood up. My brain sat down. <laughs> I forgot my name. <laughs> my name's Bebe. That's how it was. I was absolutely terrified. It's the first time in my life, even though I've been in gales of wind and hurricanes and all the rest of it in the fishing boat, it's the first time that I experienced the smell of fear. Have you ever smelled fear? And me and a room full of people forgot my name. And I'd practiced it for a month. But now, <laughs> now I can stand up here, hopefully with confidence and the arrogance, but you, because you know why? Because I've done it a million times. I practiced and practiced and practiced. Inspiration. You've got to find your inspiration. What inspires you? Could be your kids. Could be your wife. Could be somebody else's wife. I don't really care. What find your inspiration. And get your... Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> get your desire in places. How bad do you want it, guys? How bad do you want it? If we can come off a fishing boat and turn our 89 million pounds in this business, what can you do? Get yourself discipl discipline in place. So that... I believe is the DNA of peak performance. It's made up of your competence and your commitment. So the next question I've got for you is, which one applies to you? 
you now know what area you need to work on, or you're fine the way you are. Because Jamie just said, took three things away. Hopefully, one of the things that you'll take away is you now know what you need to work on. Because all the speakers are doing today, guys, is giving you some homework. You don't become a millionaire listening to this stuff and then working. It's the homework, the time that you spend alone with it, it, it makes a difference. Does that make sense? It's the time that you spend alone developing you as the business person, developing you as the person who deserves the success. Does that make sense? Let's see the answer. Oh, fantastic. So we'll get 1% of the time the way there are great stuff. We won't ask, the you know. So, how it can roll for you, of course you can get great results. Of course you can get great results. There's too much evidence in the room, as you will see by the end of the day. It's about taking effective action. How do you take effective action? By practicing to start with, to become effective. The only way you can get effective is by practicing, okay? And by getting into success thinking. When I, when I uh, wrote the f our uh, first book, because we had been handed some fantastic books, Thinking Grow Rich, as I said to start with, just to name one, um, it, it does seem a wee bit too heavy for me, coming off a fishing boat. So we wrote the first book, uh, Where Does Your Success Start? Where does it all start? Subtitled, Where Does you, Your Success Start? As an introduction for people like us, like me, it had never been used to reading this kind of material. John C. Maxwell, the world authority in leadership, the best writer, the best speaker in leadership in the world today. It was not too heavy. So the first book we did was as an introduction to this kind of stuff. Would that make sense? So if you've got any new people, get them my book for Barry. Barry's got them there, and, and we can sign them for you if you want at the break. Okay? Quick plug, sorry. Um, <laughs> you see, every night at the end of the day, you need to have a strategic huddle. Sometimes it's with yourself, sometimes it's with your, your partner. Okay? And a strategic huddle is this, guys. Oops. It's three questions. Question one, what's gone right? What's gone right in the day? Question two, what's gone wrong and why? Obviously, question one is what's gone right and why. Question two, what's gone wrong and why? To get to your peak performance, key question coming up. What needs to change? Does that make sense for you? How you become a peak performer is a strategic huddle every day. Remember this, guys. If you're working this business properly, you will feel like this a lot, even like this. If you're working a business properly, you won't be long there because you'll soon be like this. Okay? But this is clean easy. This, this is network marketing. This is how it rolls. Understand that. Feed your brain with the right stuff. Get out there, and I'll finish as I always do, right on the button. Get out there and just do it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you.